Hi everybody, Sprite here from Condi Systems and I am really excited to continue our Education Wednesdays and I am very, very excited because today we have uh, a very special guest um, and that is Ryan Moore. Hi Ryan. Hey, how are you doing? Very good. So I want to thank you so very much for uh, joining us today and for talking about um, all of the amazing things you're going to talk about with garment decorating and all of that. I'm very, very excited that you're here. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your company? Well, thank you again. For, uh, thanks for having me. I love talk, love, love education. Uh, this is a chance for me to actually get behind the press and whether it's a new press or a super printing press and play with some of our all made shirts and do some testing, which I actually have never done before. So I just got to walk through some dogs on how it works. Wow, that's so cool. There's so many different ways to get it, you know, to print a little bit about and yourself and about your company. I'm excited to, to do that. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> okay, you're, you're good. So uh, my background, I actually got into garment decoration because I was in a band uh, a long time ago, about in the late 90s, early 2000s. We were a punk rock band and we made our own t-shirts because they're just too expensive to make shirts otherwise. I screen printed shirts out of my mom's, you know, kitchen, made a mess out of everything. So my beautiful background in garment decoration is screen printing. Uh, I don't know if you would really call what we did back in the day screen printing. We literally like used the pizza oven to seal the shirt and uh, pretty much made a disaster out of everything that we touched. And most of the time the shirts didn't actually work all the way. They would either get smudged or washed out or after the first wash. But we made a lot of really cool punk rock shirts, I guess you would say, uh, because people liked them and it funded our, our three albums and touring the country several times. And it was a lot of fun. Eventually other bands started asking, you know, how do you decorate a shirt? How can you help us decorate a shirt? So, you know, long story short, we actually helped other bands start decorating a shirt. Uh, the name of our main company is called uh, Lionet, and it was founded in the 2004. Uh, our main website with that company is called ScreenPrinting.com. Pretty much everything you need to screen print. We've been um, what we call powering the print for you know, 16 years, helping over 200,000 people to start screen printing businesses. Uh, we got to know you guys because we did sublimation for a little bit, and uh, it was not just we kind of wanted to focus on screen printing and what we're good at, uh, and then you know let other people like Tony do what you're doing. So it's been really cool to know David over the, the course of the last about uh, over 10 years now and uh, have a lot of respect for the company. So about four years ago, we started an apparel company called Allmade, which is what I'm going to be using on this, you know, this uh, live stream cast. Allmade is a, a sustainable and uh, environmentally friendly as well as two of responsible people. So we focus on the tri-blend product. And the tri product is a lot what I'm going to be talking about, both screen printing wise and transfer wise today. Uh, because sometimes blends can be tricky, whether you're doing heat transfers or whether you're doing screen printing. So I'll kind of you know, walk through the different ways to make a blended t shirt and also how, you know, the type of t shirt that you choose not only has an impact on, you know, the quality of your print, but also has an impact on the environment or the people that are making it. So excited to, to do a little playing and get my ink uh, under my fingers and my fingers slightly burned maybe on the heat press uh, with you guys today. Go ahead now. Hey Ryan, it's Doug DeWitt from Condi. How are you? Good, good, good. Doug, thanks for walking me through the, the transfer process earlier. Super simple. Well, at the moment, we are trying to get past a quick audio issue here. Uh, but as far as the garments that you're planning on demonstrating, uh, you said that, that they're your own brand, correct? And yeah. Is, um, are you having a problem hearing my audio? Are we having problems? Well, yeah, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to fix it right now. Okay. Uh, if you want to, I can switch to my other audio or my other camera, if that is going to work better. Sprite, can you hear? No, I'm, I'm trying to right now. Give me just a second. Sorry, we're having some kind of weird echo and I'm trying to fix it. I apologize. We're also in the middle of a thunderstorm. Um, Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. I think I fixed it. If you ask me questions. Tell me 
Hingo. Hingo. He's good. Hingo. Hey, Ryan, can you hear us? I can hear you guys fine. I don't, I don't hear an echo. Yeah, he can go. We can hear him. Go. Yeah, I think we can hear you much better now. Go ahead. Okay, so again, we're we're going to be using all made shirts. So all made apparel uh, just got picked up by Sanmar. Uh, available anywhere. Sanmar distributes t-shirts. It's an eco-friendly tri blend. We're also making organic uh, cotton shirts in the in the future. But we really made this shirt to be a great printable shirt, a great heat transferable shirt, as well as great for the people on the planet that it make it and it's made from. So I'll talk about like through the course of you know either screen printing or he do he transfers on it with the forever paper. I talk about the advantages to making a good quality shirt and how it's made, but also what it's made from. Fantastic. Are you ready to get started? I am ready to go. So uh, first we'll get going and talk about the t-shirt and then we'll go and do some processes, screen printing, as well as doing some transfers. And we also make masks, the all masks. Uh, so this is, as I talk about the t-shirt, also somewhat refer to the mask a little bit. some printing and some transfers on that. So feel free to ask questions, uh, and uh, so the condi does, and right, if you guys interrupt me, and I'll answer those questions as we go along here. Sound good? Will do. Okay, so first of all, I want to talk about a blended product, uh, and just the different ways the product is made. So this is a tribe blend. Tribe blend has three different types of fabric in it, so as I'm getting some different, uh, different of the t-shirt colors that we make here, I'll, I'll talk about the three different fibers that are most tribe blends. Most tribalins are consisted of polyester, uh, they're consisted of a cotton, and they're consisted of some type of cellulose fiber. So most tribalins use rayon, um, but there are different types of cellulose fibers. There's rayon, there's modal, and there's also tensile, or tensile modal. So we use modal, which is slightly softer and has a stronger wet strength than rayon. So it also has some antimicrobial properties, so when you're working out in a tribalin, uh, it won't sink as fast but also washes better. It has a more of a matte property, which a lot of tribalins, as you print them, you notice what's called fibrillation after you wash it, meaning that the fibers of the shirt are coming up through the transfer or through the print. The customer doesn't get put that you know, first fire experience that they had. So if you use a pencil or a modal in the, in the blend of your shirt, that's going to be smoother, which is also going to equal a better print or a better finished quality product for yourself. So, the way you dye the polyester really dictates how you print it. And that goes for screen printing or that goes for transfers. So I was walking you through on how to do transfers on polyester. Now these blends have polyester, but the way that polyester is dyed or the way the fabric is dyed really dictates how that polyester transfer application or screen print process or you know, direct garment process for that matter is done. So, as you know, you guys are a sublimation company as well. So you do sublimation. Uh, polyester receives uh, receives dye when it, when it heats up. It also gases off and releases dye when it heats up. So if you have a black polyester shirt, something like this, and it's got a white print on it and, or a white transfer on it, and it's just a normal white print or a white transfer, and you heat it up or wash it, that white is going to turn gray over time, which makes it not optimal because your customer bought a white print or a white transfer. So the way we actually dye our polyester in the all-made shirt. So again, we use, these shirts all have three different fibers in it. We use 50% recycled polyester. I was actually just on a podcast recently with uh, Reprieve. So we use Reprieve recycled polyester. It's a really cool thing because we're taking water bottles and instead of going in the landfill or going in the ocean, we're recycling with water bottles into a t-shirt. And it's pretty fascinating on how that process actually works because you're taking just the water bottle you're drinking out of or that you have hand sanitizer in and recycling that into polyester fiber. That polyester fiber we use 50% of, so 50% polyester fiber. And then we blend that with 25% uh, organic cotton from Modal, uh, from Texas and 25% Modal, uh, which is the cellulose fiber. So the the cotton and the modal, those are what we call natural fibers, meaning they're made from natural plants. Cotton is also always a natural plant. And modal is actually made from a beet tree. Now, unlike the reason why we choose modal is because not only is it stronger and softer than cotton, but it also has a much lower environmental impact. So it's all made impacting both environmental and humanitarian. 
we wanted to make sure that we chose products that not only made a good quality shirt and made good quality print, but we chose products that made a better impact. So because make, trees don't need as much water and because trees can actually be regenerated a lot quicker um, and are a lot less intensive on the soil, Modal has about a 6% environmental impact that a cotton crop has. So again, 50% natural and 50% polyester in this, even though it's three different fibers. And that's when it comes to dyeing, because there's different dyes that dye polyester and there's different dyes that dye natural fibers. So the, this shirt is right here, this is called our Fairly White. Now, what, most white shirts are bleached. Uh, we don't use bleach in our fairly white because it's what we prefer to not use bleach. So this is a natural shirt, so like a natural cotton shirt. The reason why it looks a little bit lighter than a natural cotton shirt is because Modal is a white fiber and the recycled polyester that we use is a white fiber. So it's a fairly white, that's why we call it fairly white, a fairly white shirt. Um, it doesn't have any dyes in it. This is our standard blend. Now, this all that's right here, this is our Heather Gray. This is the same blend of fiber, but this actually uses 25% black polyester. So we're not dyeing that black polyester again. We're just using 25% black polyester straight out of um, before we even blend it into the different yarn. So no dye in this one, you're just using black polyester. Otherwise, it would look exactly like this. So these are our two bases that we create all of our colors from. From there, we dye it three different ways. First of all, we just finish it. So this shirt is just finished, and this shirt is just finished. It means that it has no dyes in it. And when a shirt doesn't have any dyes in it, you pretty much don't have to you know, worry about how you're transferring it or how you're printing it. So these, you can pretty much transfer a print any way that you want. Now, now we take it and we go to our natural dye. So this is our navy blue, our rebel blue. This is a natural dye, so single dye, meaning that we're just dyeing the cotton and the modal in this shirt. So the header that you see in this shirt is the polyester. And guess what? That is great because the polyester is light. It's not dyed. You don't have to again worry about any parameters in the heat press or a, a DPT machine or a screen print press to do anything different than we would normally do with a cotton shirt here. So if your polyester in your blend is not dyed, it's good. It's good because you don't have to treat it any differently. No special temperatures, no special curing parameters. You can discharge it if you're screen printing. You can use normal transfer paper if you need transfers. You don't have to do anything special to a single dye shirt as long as that single dye shirt is a natural dye shirt. Now, this black, which we're going to be doing a transfer on later, this is what we call a double dye, uh, meaning that a double dye is dyeing the polyester as well as dyeing the cotton. Uh, but the way we do double dye this shirt is we don't straight dye it, meaning that the if you look closely at the shirt, and obviously it's going to be hard to see on the computer screen, uh, but the polyester is slightly gray. It's not, you know, jet black. Because it's slightly gray, we still don't, we've actually made this shirt specifically to not have any dye migration issues. So again, if this shirt was jet black and the polyester was jet black, we probably have to change our settings a little bit over here on heat press to go on a lower temp because lower temp will prevent that dye from leaving the polyester fiber and going into our transfer. Uh, finally, this is a single dye, but this is over our heather gray base. So 25% black polyester in this garment with a vino red single dye on the natural fiber. Again, because this polyester is virgin polyester, we that straight dye black at the factory. The, the dye is actually injected into the polyester. When it's being made, we don't have the dye migration issues when it comes to the heat press. So all of our garments, what, whatever color they are, they're optimized for digital printing, for screen printing, or for, or for transfer. Uh, transfer. Um, and that was important to us because the, the faster you get a shirt you know, out of the, uh, the press, and onto a customer's back, and they're wearing it, the happier they're going to be, and the sooner they're going to come back and get another shirt for you, um, which will help us have a bigger impact. So, again, we make these in facilities. Uh, these are all made garments. We make these facilities that pay uh, great wages, have you know systems around there to rebuild communities in areas like Honduras and Haiti and even Los Angeles and Tennessee. We make these both.
both in the U.S. and in Central America and the Caribbean, um, but we also make them out of eco-friendly components. So a really cool thing to go check out is our Allmade Impact Calculator. If you go to allmade.com slash impact, you can see that, and you can, see, you can put in how many shirts an order might be. It might be 100 shirts. Um, 100 shirts would recycle, I think it was 20 pounds of plastic that would be ocean bound, or it would save 24,000 gallons of water, 30, 30 2,000 gallons of water, some incredible amount of water. Um, and you can actually go in there and you can see the impact of an order. So by using the environmentally friendly components, you're giving a great quality product, but you're also doing better for, um, you know, you're also doing better for the environment. So now let's get into the transfer process. Uh, before we do that, if, was there any questions that I could cover about dyeing garments and how to go through uh, dyeing uh, or garment collection? Or what questions to ask from your mills or your distributors? when you get into garments. I'm gonna have to drink the water. I have a deep breath on, I got the flash going on, so it's a little hot. Sprite, do we have any questions coming across the board? Um, no, not yet. Everybody really likes the, um, the recycled t-shirts. They think that's pretty cool. But as far as questions, I think, uh, Ryan, you're covering it pretty well, so. Rock and roll, all right, so. I'm going to do a little screen printing, get my fingers dirty, and I'm going to use these transfers and forever transfer paper on the different shirts. We'll see how they react. I'm really excited about the forever transfers because I've, I've seen them and I've heard about them a lot. You know, I'm on a couple of the Facebook groups that, that use them, and uh, it's, I've never actually done it. So, specifically excited to see how they work on the all main garment. So, uh, screen printing, if you haven't screen printed, it's, you know, the oldest form of garment decoration. I, I was doing some research, and uh, I think it was 2,000 years ago it was invented. Uh, screen printing was invented, I believe, by the Chinese, after using horse hair to make sense, you know, make a, a screen, and then pressing beats, and then using leaves to create the stencil. So it's the oldest form of decoration in the book. Um, and there's some advantages to it. Advantages be like. You can do a lot of the same shirt. Uh, the disadvantage is that there's a lot of process involved. There's the ink that you have to have. There's uh, specific types of uh, darkroom equipment to make screens. Uh, so there are some cool things about screen printing, um, but there are also some disadvantages. I think different shirts are, you know, it's kind of like different strokes for different folks, um, but sometimes it's different strokes for the climate that you have. So if they have one shirt, you know, you want to transfer it. That's one shirt, you want to transfer it, and then you want to do it. If you have 100, you have the screen printing set up. So I, a lot of shops that I work with on the screen printing side also do a lot of transfers. In fact, we're seeing a huge resurgence in transfers. We get a lot of questions about the all main shirts when it comes to transfers. Um, even though maybe they're core business of screen printing, or vice versa, a transfer shop might be adding screen printing to supplement some of their simple stuff. So, I'm going to do a couple simple designs. These designs, I would say, are optimized for screen printing. This design that we're going to use to do it on the transfer side, oh my goodness, if I had to do this design, um, if I had to do this design screen printing wise, we'd be here all day. There's no way, you know, I'd be separating artwork and be doing multiple screens and registering. In fact, I probably couldn't even do it with the setup that we have. Now. So, again, different things, um, different applications for different things. So, we're going to be using a water based ink. Now, when it comes to DCG printing, when it comes to transfers, when it comes to screen printing, I'm a big fan of eco friendly. So, this is our Green Galaxy ink that we sell at Ryanet. Um, it's a water based ink. Most shirts out there right now are printed with what's called plastic ink. Plastic ink is a plastic base. The reason why I like water based is because water based is a natural component, especially when we're going on natural fibers. I want a soft print, but I also want a natural and eco-friendly print. So that's why I like water-based ink. So it's natural, but it's also softer. So I'm gonna come through a little bit. Let's see what I'm doing. Um, when you screen print, you have to ink the screen up. Now this screen's already burned just and registered. Um, it's a, a two-step process, and it uses emulsion, similar to the forever transfer paper. Um, but the emulsion is actually not exposed emulsion, so Using light and a film positive, I'm making my screen. I have to leave it in a dark room, and it takes water to do that. So what I've done right now is I've flooded the stencil with ink, and then I'm going to print it. Um, you can either push print, or you can pull print. I'm going to push print because 
specifically as you're starting it's a lot easier to control the pressure on the system. So just to typically I need two passes of eight. And then look up and then we have a print. So this is a simple one color print. Um, it kind of just walks through the screen printing process. It's uncured, so you got to be a little careful there. So first you burn the screen, then you ink the ink the screen, uh, then you print the shirt, then you splash it, and then you cure it. So I'll talk about that now because just like doing a heat press, you do have to set this ink. And this is something that I did not do a very good job of back in the band days. Um, so I have that rotated underneath a flash dryer right now. Um, transfer in, uh, transfer, uh, transfer set at about, uh, not transfer, simmering it sets at 330 degrees. So similar screen parameters to a transfer. However, um, it needs to penetrate through the entire ink layer. So there is a little bit of select, uh, variability there, meaning that if you have a thicker uh, level of ink, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer to cure. If you have a more powerful heater, it's going to take less to cure. So curing a shirt is important. Now, as you see over there, that is smoking. Smoking hot. Woo! That typically means it's cured. But it's also water-based. So the water-based does evaporate a little bit and uh, is does feel nice and soft. So like a sublimation print, um, water base is very soft to the touch. Um, transfer transfers are typically I like transfers because they're they're fairly eco friendly, meaning that um, sublimation is a very eco friendly process. Uh, you know you're not you don't have waste in making cream or have any water usage there. So that it, you know, it makes good quality products uh, in a very eco-friendly way, which is a big upside to that. Um, so now I'm going to do a similar print, but I'm going to use the forever two-step paper. Uh, and then we're going to do some mass printing. So this is a, a two-step process, and I just learned how to do this. So this is cool. Um, doing the two-step process uh, because I like I was wanted to know like how do you get this uh, transfer um, onto a carrier sheet. So the carrier sheet right here has two sides. This is a, essentially a glue, right, on a molten. And then you're putting your forever dark transfer on top of that and then pressing the two of them together. Uh, so I believe it is face down. And John, you might have to walk me through this too. You've got it correct. Face down, and then it's a, and it's two minutes, right? At about 310 degrees. I have my heat press at 305. Uh, yes, so, if you've got your press between 300 and 330 Fahrenheit, you want to press for about two minutes. Okay, and what was cool is dialing in the pressure, like knowing that this doesn't need, need a whole lot of pressure. It's a light to medium pressure, and knowing how this feels. Um, in the two step process, we're really kind of dialing in my pressure when it comes to actually the shirt. So I'm going to send this back and um, got a couple more calculations done. And when it comes to doing uh, the transfer onto the shirt, is it, what, what's the time on that? What's the time parameters on that? Well, whenever you have the emulsion applied over the printed toner and you're ready to put the design down on the garment, um, the time is always going to be 30 seconds. Uh, what will vary is the temperature depending on the material content. Now, if you're pressing to a 100% natural fiber, like 100% cotton, uh, we would press at about 300 degrees. Uh, whenever I go to a cotton poly blend, I tend to go down to between 280 to 260 Fahrenheit. Uh, that helps to keep dye migration from happening with your traditional 50-50 blends. Cool. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. Um, and that's one thing about the all make that we don't have to worry about. So I'm going to keep my settings here. I'm going to do one on a double by shirt, and then I'll do the same transfer on a single by shirt, and we'll actually use the dark one. We can see any variance between the transfers because of the way the shirt's actually look. 
so this is uh, a little bit here. This is a hot process a cooling process uh, that was uh, was pretty pretty cool to see. So, um, how much does one of these trans like this two step process cost? Um, and then we can kind of compare that to what other options might be out there. Well, as far as the cost of producing a transfer with an Oki Data white toner printer and the uh, Forever Low Temp film, um, I would say you are probably looking at an average cost of maybe about $2.50 a transfer for an 8.5 by 11, um, about $4.50 to $5 for 11 by 17, depending on coverage of toner, and then about Five dollars fifty-six to six six dollars per transfer, if you're going the full bleed twelve and a half by nineteen transfer format, which they call their super B or tabloid B. Yeah, so I would say it's very comparable to like a uh, rusty garment, um, but without the fifteen thousand, you know, the, the very expensive and the maintenance in that. Rusty so I'm going to take this and throw it up to the top side. Uh, it looks like we have a really good feel here. Uh, Doug was telling me earlier to watch for any white that might come off. Keep this down on the flat and use the platinum floor. That helps the seal process. Very similar to a hot uh, hot seal transfer, um, uh, stable transfer. And that was super easy. So there it is. Looks and like you did a good job with it, Ryan. Go directly onto a shirt. Or do I need to let this cool down at all? As far as that transfer is concerned, technically speaking, it is ready to apply. Now, one pro tip that I will pass along to you and your viewers is you want to trim the outside edges uh, with a pair of scissors because if you look down, you might see some residual emulsion that was applied to the edge of the sheet. Now, technically, that emulsion isn't going to really hold to anything. Um, if you were to, let's say, apply it to a garment by accident, you could remove that excess emulsion with a little piece of heat-resistant tape. You essentially reheat the design and use the tape to pull away. But if you go ahead and do a quick trim with your scissors, uh, that usually eliminates that outside edging that you might see from the emulsion sheet. Got it. Okay. That's pretty easy to do. So just trim, trim pretty close to the design. As far as the trim is concerned, you want to leave, I would probably say, if you can, about an inch around the design. Um, you don't necessarily have to, let's say, like trim to the border or trim to the edge. Just as long as you get that outside edging eliminated, you should be good. Now, what can happen sometimes, like where you're cutting here, you know, sometimes if you have a misshaped design like this, one of the benefits of working with a film product is when you take it and you lay it over your garment, uh, being able to see through the design is definitely going to help with the alignment of the design on the shirt. Nice. Great. So it's got great color. Uh, and I'm going to be going on to our... Okay. And then going on to our double dies, or what we call our space black on those shirts. And then just lining it up here. So again, we shouldn't have any dimization issues here, but I do want to do the same transfer on a different natural dye shirt. I'm going to use the standard transfer parameters as far as curing. And then we're going to set the time in there because I have my heat press up for two minutes. Same pressure. Same pressure. You want to press for 30 seconds. After you press it for 30 seconds, Ryan, you want to remove the shirt from the press, but you want to let the film sheet cool down naturally before you remove the film sheet from the garment. Uh, the technique that I use to remove the film sheet is I roll the film off the garment, kind of like you were rolling off vinyl. Okay. So it is more of a, it's a cool feel. The, the shirt is it's not cold. It doesn't have to be all the way. Well, I tell people that it needs to be a cold peel. 
Now, some of the things that I will do to rapidly cool a design is if you have like a piece of metal, a uh, piece of metal will suck the heat right out of that film layer, uh, waving it around, putting it under a fan, uh, just basically letting it cool down on its own. Now, if you let it naturally cool, you want to let it cool for about four to five minutes before you attempt to remove the film. Um, if you were to put it over something metal or something, you know, heat absorbent, you can usually remove the film after about a minute or two. Now, once you remove the film, don't forget to cover the transfer with a nonstick silicone sheet. I should have given a few in your package there, uh, but you want to do a finishing press with the design to help set the emulsion into the fabric to make sure that it's properly bonded. Also, when you reheat the design, Ryan, because we're rewarming the design on the garment, we can stretch that design from side to side to give it a little bit more elasticity than what it had before because of the cold peel. Okay, got it. So, you, uh, you press it again once we're done with it, and then I'm going to do the other transfer now. Okay. And then you see the Teflon uh, silicone Teflon paper? Yeah, now when you put your protective sheet over your transfer. Um, my preference has always been to use like nonstick silicone as opposed to Teflon because in my experience, Ryan, Teflon has a tendency to retain moisture that might be in the fabric material or, you know, within the paper. Uh, that moisture, you know, can play, it could have an adverse effect on the way that the emulsion properly bonds to the fiber. So having something like nonstick silicone uh, keeps that moisture from building inside of the press, and I think overall it's just a better way to go. So this is a nonstick silicone, correct? That should do just fine. Okay. All right, yeah, this is fun. So we got this one pretty cool now. I'll peel that off when we get this one off here. Cool. All right, here we go. So you kind of roll this back. Yeah, start at a corner and see if the yeah. Once you get the roll going, yeah, then kind of roll it just like you're rolling vinyl. Wow. That was great. You're knocking this out like a first-time pro. <laughs> Tell all of our videos, if you've ever seen our screen printing videos, uh, we do them the exact same way. They just get edited. <laughs> uh, all right, so now you put this back on the heat press and put the, how long do you press it for the second time? Okay, we're going to put it back on the press. We're going to cover it with our non-stick silicone sheet, and we're going to press it for the same 30 seconds, same temperature, same pressure. Uh, like I was telling you earlier, the reason that I love this product is because once you have your heat press calibrated, so to speak, as far as pressure and temperature is concerned, the only thing you really have to adjust is time. So if you have only have one heat press in your shop, Working with a paper where you don't have a lot of variance in time, temperature, or pressure really helps production. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I had to adjust here was the, was the time of the, you know, doing the two-step process. So it made it simple. Well, when you pull this shirt out of the press, it should have a much softer feel than when you put it in before. That's the benefit of doing the finishing press with the silicone sheet. That as well. That's awesome. So this is was not bright white, but I could there are some more solid block areas right here, so I could see when I do the second process on the single guy, make sure that we didn't have any down migration. Actually, now there's some white here, so we can actually see down here if you have a bright white, just as bright as the other one. So I'll peel that, and then we can do some. 
cross comparison back and forth. There, make sure we're make sure it's performing like I said it would perform. Good. So peeling that away. Put that on here again. So after we do that, we'll do a quick mask, uh, both screen print and then heat transfer using this paper on a mask as well. Because I don't know about you guys, but mask are all the craze out here right now in Washington. I'm in Washington State and Oregon, right outside Fort Morgan. We have mandates for them. Got my own mask on. Should, should be on right now, but no one's around me, so I get to talk freely. Put me right there. And then we'll do some cross comparison back and forth. So, yeah, this looks, this looks good. Uh, the shirt, this is a very stretchy, you know, shirt. And I would say that compared to a plastisol print in the same parameters, it feels just as good, if not a little bit softer, a little bit more flexible uh, because it is um, pressed so nicely and so soft. Well, just to relay some additional information on the Forever Laser Dark Low Temp, um, when it comes to washing the designs, um, we tend to, of course, recommend that you wash your garments in cold or warm water, tumble dry under low heat, uh, no liquid fabric softener or no bleach. But when we test the paper, uh, we test it under hot wash, hot dry conditions, a minimum 25 hot wash, hot dry cycles. Um, I would say as far as the overall durability of the forever low temp, um, if you have people out there that are used to working with plastisol transfers, they shouldn't notice a difference as far as durability between a traditional plastisol transfer and a transfer done with the low temp and the oaky. Cool. Yeah, except you can do it right then and there. You have to wait for it. Dumb. So I'm going to show, I'm going to bring in this over here. This actually came out great. So if you see that, that's the, that's our space black. It's nice and bright. And that's our single dye rebel blue. And because we're specially dyeing that polyester fiber, so it doesn't have any dye migration issues, we can just do that at the same temp as we did with the single dye product. So even though, though these products are blends, we're getting um, consistent results between all the different colors and not have to worry about doing any temperature testing and or variance setting uh, because of how they're done. So really cool to see that in reality. Um, and it's a really easy process to do when it comes to the printing process. So, uh, any questions for, for Doug uh, or for my experience as I was going through that for the very first time? Ooh, I made my first turn. Well, like I said, for a first time attempt, you, you, you did it great. Um, definitely a gold star for you. What are some things that can go wrong? Well, as far as things that could go wrong, um, usually once we have the design weeded, what can go wrong is if we apply the design either with too much heat or too much pressure, uh, what I tend to call glazing the emulsion. In other words, you're taking that soft, flexible emulsion layer and you're making it harder and more brittle because you're using too much heat and pressure. The danger there is, Ryan, you don't see the results initially when you make the shirt. Your client will know the results the first time when they wash the garment. It literally looks like a spider web cracking effect across the entire design. So when it comes to applying a transfer, you always want to err on using, let's say like, if you're going to err on one way or the other, you know, go with a little less heat as opposed to too much heat. You know, kind of like with sublimation printing or flash curing or anything like that, usually more heat does more harm than using slightly less heat. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, and so using a 300 shift is a good safe bet rather than having to go all the way up to 330. It's also better on the garment. These garments do withstand up to 350, 360 degrees, um, but the most all is a little bit more pressure on or sensitive to heat, so 
if you want to do, don't get too hot, um, which sounds like that is not a problem at all. So I'm going to be screen printing this mask next, and then I'm going to be doing some things like that. We're going to transfer this out here, so make a wild mask. Uh, and uh, the thing about a mask when it comes to doing screen printing and or transfers is typically they are multiple ply. So these are all masks again, and they are two ply masks. So great for, you know, keeping your stuff inside of you and not spreading it to everyone else. But because it's two ply, uh, it does move during the process. So specifically when it comes to screen printing, there's got to be a way to hold it down. So what I got here is I have a hold down. Uh, and this is a attachment that allows me to, oh, that's my dog. And somebody just walked in with a mask and he didn't like it. Uh, I have a hold down here and this allows me to place the mask down. Um, so this is made out of the same material as the shirt. So we print it the exact same way. Um, place that down, I'm doing a right side print. So I got to line the mask up like this a little bit and then I take this and then I lock it into place. So, oops. Uh, so as you can see, that hold down attachment starts to take those multiple uh, fiber layers or fabric layers and bring them together so that during the process of printing, they do not move. So I'm going to open that up a little bit. And bam. So I'm going to be printing right in the top corner right here. Um, and should be no problem. So bring my screen over. Drop it down into place here. And I'm going to be using, again, water-based ink. I think it's important to use water-based ink because we're going to be breathing through this. So I'll grab my squeegee and then do a quick print. I'll, I'll do one print, too. This is such a small print. I'm going to do it um, with a smaller squeegee. And I'm also going to be able to do it um, with the camera in the down position. So that you can see what I'm doing. So like that. And then... We'll do it sideways. Just two passes. There we go. And then there's the finished print right there. So simple to print and transfer. Uh, simple to screen print. Uh, I'm actually going to we're going to be doing a uh, video later this week that's all made. Um, so that goes like this. Um, I were to wear this mask, this particular print goes on the side right here. I'll probably put the wild a little bit on the top. Uh, the interesting thing about printing or handling masks is that with COVID, uh, the, the virus actually dies, or most uh, stuff dies at a fairly low temperature. So if you're putting this through a conveyor drive, we typically put this through at about 300 and 310 degrees. That would kill anything. Um, so, as far as handling, you probably don't need to handle this during the printing process with a mask on uh, if you're by yourself or gloves on until after you're cured. Um, heat pressing is going to be a little different, however, because if you heat press, you're not heating the entire uh, the entire mask. You're only heating a portion of it. So, with heat press, you probably want to be handling it again with uh, maybe a little bit of protection on so that it's, it's going on to clients. Obviously, most masks come with wash before wear instructions, but I do know a lot of people that don't do that. So uh, you want to definitely take that as a So I'm going to be using some heat press. I'm going to be hitting this on the corner right here uh, with the forever transfer paper. Um, so this is already going to be needed. I'm going to be going over the side just like this, keeping the Uh, even the test or even the elastic off. Put that down and then put it down to check it over the top. And then it's connected. So let's see how this goes together because this has a nose wire. And I typically like to use a hat press when heat pressing transfers uh, onto masks because it's a little bit soft, uh, smaller. So easier to handle, uh, but we're going to try to attempt this with a Well, along that vein, watching you set up the mask for doing the transfer, uh, one of the tricks that I will employ 
is I will cut a piece of heat conductive rubber and put that underneath the mask so it kind of elevates my area from the rest of the mask. Uh, then, you know, sometimes depending on, you know, the size of the design, it gives me a little flat area to work with, makes it, you know, a little easier, so to speak. Um, when it comes to pressing, you know, pressure really isn't going to be as critical um, because, like you said, you know, it's, it's basically going to be on the side. Um, when it comes to applying a transfer to a mask, uh, there is a technique that we use when we print that we call rasterization or screening. And what that does is it's going to put a distress or hole pattern within the design. That's essential because if you're going to put a transfer over a mask, it needs to be breathable. Because remember, we're basically putting an emulsion area where, you know, we need to breathe through. So doing like what you're doing is correct, you know, putting the design on the side so that you can breathe normally through the mask. If you're going to try to decorate the entire surface of the mask with a transfer, like I said, we definitely want to employ that screening distress effect so it does make the design breathable. Yeah, absolutely. I think keeping it out, the easiest thing to do is keep it out off of the, the image, you know, the, the mouth area. Um, most people don't like it over the mouth, but for those who do, make sure that you're using, in the screen print world, you could use water-based ink or similar kind of um, distress that lets air through, but good point on that. And I love that the rubber, is that a, what do you, do you guys sell that rubber? Yeah, we sure do. Um, what's cool about heat conductive rubber is we carry it in various sizes or custom sizes. So essentially, you can order a roll of heat conductive rubber and just essentially chop it up to whatever size you need. And usually what I'll do is I'll make like little kind of custom molds, so to speak, for doing things like collars, sleeves, that kind of thing. That's awesome. That makes it definitely easy. So let this cool down. That's right. Let it cool down and peel it off. You know, once it's cooled, um, you could do a finishing press. Like I said, if you want to soften the design, stretch it out, so to speak, uh, I think that would be more critical on a t-shirt than something like a mask. Um, but like I said, it really kind of depends on the coverage. If you have a small coverage area like what you have there, I think once you do your finishing press, you'll be fine. You mean... I can I can pull right away and go to where I don't have to do a finishing press or can still do a finishing press. That's correct. Um, you know, as far as the finishing press is concerned, uh, the finishing press mainly has to do with softening the hand, helping the emulsion bond, and adding to wash durability. Now, when you're talking about if you're going to wash your mask every day. Uh, like I said, that finishing press is really going to help that design, you know, the emulsion bond. It's definitely going to help with image durability. Um, if you do the finishing press, like I said, one of the things you'll notice is the design itself will go from a gloss finish to a matte finish, generally speaking. Yep. I saw that definitely happen. Yep. That's all here from the screen print perspective. And then I'll peel this. There, bam, super easy. And then, yeah, very glossy right now. So definitely you want to go a little matte on that. There you go. There you go. A lot of pressure. Yeah, this is the all mask again. Uh, we made a fitted eco-friendly mask uh, that has a nose wire here uh, with, and then elastic. So two 14-inch elastic straps. I wear the strap over the top of my head um, like that. The other ones will go around your neck. You can tie it like so if you want to, uh, but it's nice and fitted on top. You can wear glasses over it. You can breathe uh, very easily. And because it's eco-friendly fabric, it does, it does it stand, it will last quite a very long time um, when it comes to washability. See that. There you go. There's the transfer there. So, always different ways to do different things. That works out really good as well. My kids are probably going to want that one. Looks good. Matches them. I have three boys. So, 
And they're, they're not a huge fan of the mask, I'll say, but they're probably going to have to wear them going back into school. Wild right there. And if you don't like wearing these over your head, you can tie the strap to your fit around the ear like the ear strap mask as well. Uh, but again, um, I love the fit. And the other cool thing is, is that if I'm talking, I can simply put this down around my neck and then go back to working position up there very quickly. So yeah, and it works great with the transfer as well. So that was cool to see. Hey, Ryan, we did have a question come across, a uh, lady who came in a little late to the presentation, Angela. Uh, she was asking where she could get the shirts and masks you are demonstrating. Awesome. Well, the shirts are, and the, they're both available from Sandlot. So uh, both are all masks. If you go to allmade.com, um, A-L-L-M-A-D-E, I think we all make it better together. Uh, allmade.com, you can sign up for a wholesale account with Sandlot, or you can buy retail there. Um, the masks are also available. We have some different special edition masks, like the ones you see here with the black edging, on ScreenPrinting.com. Um, so that's just ScreenPrinting.com. So uh, available wholesale through Samar. Uh, special edition stuff is available from the mask perspective at ScreenPrinting.com. Appreciate the question. Because the mask is so much smaller, it only has one recycled water bottle in it, whereas the T-shirt has about six recycled water bottles. I was flabbergasted with how hard these are to make um, compared to a t-shirt. A t-shirt is actually a lot easier to make, uh, make. So when we were making these back in March, we thought, like, wow, how hard is it to make a mask? It seems so simple. But if you liken it to underwear, <coughs> underwear is typically actually more expensive than a t-shirt when you go to buy it. Because it's much more kind of, you know, uh, intricate, probably. And you have to use your much smaller movements with your hands when you're sewing. So that probably lends to costing um, or it would be a little bit harder to manufacture. Especially if they're made here in the US. <laughs> Especially if they're made here in the US. These are these ones are made in the US. Cool. Fantastic. Are there any other questions, Doug? Sprite, do we have any other questions on the big board? I think we have tackled every question. Awesome. Well this is a lot of fun. I really appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, we appreciate you taking the time to demonstrate those fine looking shirts. And like I said, as far as applying the forever low temp, you are now a certified pro. Sweet, I can do videos. I can do like some YouTube uh, tutorials on how to do two step, three step transfers. Man, there you go. Your certificate is in the mail. We're also going to be doing a little speed test. Has a traditional screen printer. I'm going to try to screen print masks on Friday, uh, and then Mel, my cohort, is going to be doing heat transfers, and we'll see who beats. Uh, we're going to have a little race. We'll see the heat transfer faster, you can screen print, uh, uh, screen print masks faster, and she'll be using a much better setup than I was using here, which is off the And when are you giving that presentation, Ryan? Uh, we're going to film it on Friday. I'm not sure if it'll go live um, on our channel. You can follow All Made Apparel. It's just All Made Apparel. On, on Instagram and Facebook, um, or go to allmade.com. And I might go live this week uh, or next week. So uh, definitely check that out. The um, my name's Ryan Moore. Uh, I don't have an E at the end of my name, so it's M O O R. And you can also follow me on Instagram or Facebook as Ryan Moore. I know you. Ryan, thank you very much for the demonstration, man. Uh, we really appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Sprite. Appreciate you guys. Keep up the good work over there at Condi. Thank you, David. You guys run an awesome ship, an awesome company. Keep doing what you're doing. All right. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Bye, Ryan.